In Algebra 2, we're going to be spending quite a bit of time solving equations. So in this lesson, we're going to learn the basics of that process so that we can then expand upon it as we move through. In solving equations, there are a number of properties and rules that need to be followed in order to be successful in this endeavor. The first such property is called the reflexive property. Now, what the reflexive property states is that an item is equal to itself. So, algebraically, that's A equals A, but mathemat and numerically that would be like saying 5 is equal to 5. This sounds obvious, but sometimes it, it can be a little confusing the ways that it shows up. Next is the symmetric pro property, which tells us that if A equals B, then B equals A. And that seems a little bit obvious, but the symmetric property tells us that if we say 1 plus 4 equals 5, then you can conclude that 5 is equal to 1 plus 4. And this allows us to be able to work with a variable on either side, such as you might be used to having it on the left side. If you solve an equation with it on the right, you can change it over to the left using the symmetric property. <coughs> Next is the transitive property. Transitive property says that if A equals B, and if B equals C, then it can be concluded that A is equal to C. And what this allows us to do mathematically is if we say 1 plus 4 equals 5, and 5 is equal to 2 plus 3, then we could conclude that 1 plus 4 is equal to 2 plus 3. And allows us to get rid of a middle object that's unnecessary in order to solve equations involving variables. Now with substitution, if a equals b, then anywhere in the equation that we find b, you can replace with a. Or, the opposite is also true, you can replace any a with a b. So if we have the equation 9 plus a equals 15, then I could also say that 9 plus b equals 15, because they have equal value. Now, in equality, there are a number of different properties of equality that are used in, in solving equations. There's the addition property of equality, subtraction property of equality, multiplication property of equality, and division property of equality. And what they say simply is that whatever you do to one side of an equal sign, you must do the same activity to the other side if you're changing that side. So, example with addition, if a equals b, then a plus c is equal to b plus c. Since I added the same item to both sides, then it will hold true. And this works for all values in the four basic functions, with one exception. And that is, in division property of equality, we cannot be dividing by zero. Now, solving order of operations. When you evaluate an expression, you follow the order of operations of groups, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. When we are solving, we reverse this order. So when we go to solve an equation, we look for any subtraction or addition and get rid of that first. After that, find division or multiplication and get rid of it through the properties of equality. Next, we will get rid of any exponents and last, we will break apart any groups that existed in the original equation. Now, this will work for solving equations that have variables on one side or variables on both sides. You might have to add a couple extra steps at the beginning, but it will always follow this prop property. So, throughout the course of study, I'll be referring to solving equations by sad meg, and that's what we have here, sad meg will tell us how to find the value of a missing variable. So let's get into solving some simple equations. Solving basic equations using the SADMEG method. We have m plus 12 equals 37. 
I have addition happening here, so I'm going to subtract from both sides my equal sign using the subtraction property of equality. m plus 12 minus 12 is simply m. The plus 12 and minus 12 become 0. And that will be equal to 37 minus 12, which is 25. Now, anytime we solve an equation, we should go through and check to make sure it is correct. And we do that by substitution. If m equals 25, then it should be true that 25, the value of m, plus 12 is equal to 37. But since at this point I'm not sure, I'm putting a question mark over my equal sign. Now, 25 plus 12 is 37, and 37 is equal to 37, so my answer works. Now, in our second equation here, we have variables showing up on both sides. I did mention that occasionally you'll have to do a few extra things. So in this case, we're going to distribute on our right-hand side so that we free up the group. So what we will have is 29 minus 4t is equal to, distributing my 3, 3t plus 15. Now, when you have variables on both sides of the equal sign, it's easier to get rid of the smaller value on the number line, the one that shows up further to the left. And the reason we do this is so we don't have to work with negative numbers. So on here, I have this minus 4t on the left, so I'm going to add 4t to both sides of my equal sign. And I come up with 29 is equal to 7t plus 15. At which point, I now invoke sad meg. And do I see any subtraction or addition? The answer is yes. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides of my equal sign using the subtraction property of equality. I end up with 14 equals 7t. Now I have multiplication, so using the division property of equality, I'm going to divide both sides by 7, and I come out with 2 is equal to t. I'm wanting to make sure that this is correct, I will substitute it back into the original equation. 29 minus 4 times 2 is supposed to be equal to 3 times 2 plus 5. Well, 29 minus 4, uh, 4 times 2 is 29 minus 8. And that is supposed to be equal to 3 times 7. Simplifying my left-hand side, I get 21. Right-hand side, I get 21. So my answer works out and we have checked it off. Now along with solving basic equations, we do have a couple of situations where variables show up on both sides of the equal sign where we might have what are called special solutions. So in our first equation here, we have 2x plus 5 is equal to 4x plus 18 minus 2x. Now another step that happens occasionally before sad meg is combining like terms. So if we have multiple items, like terms, on the same side of the equal sign, we will combine them. For instance, here, on the right-hand side, I have a 4x and a negative 2x. So I will go through the process of combining those. Left side does not change. 2x plus 5 is equal to 4x minus 2x is 2x plus 18. Next, we gather all of our variables to one side of the equal sign. So I'm going to subtract 2x from the left and from the right using the subtraction property of equality. And on the left, these become a zero. On the right, these also become a zero. So what I have remaining is 5 is equal to 18. When you come up with a solution that has no variables involved and is an untrue equation, 5 is not equal to 18, there is no solution. Graphically, what this would look like is that you have a set of parallel lines with different starting values. So they will never cross and never intersect one another. So we simply state no solution. Now, our, another special situation is shown here on the right. If we have 10h plus 50 equals 2 times h plus 10 plus 30. Distributing on the left-hand side, I will get 10h plus 50 equals 2h 
plus 20 plus 30. Now combining my like terms on the right hand side, I get 10h plus 50 equals 2h plus 50. My apologies in this. When I type this out, I misset something. There should have been a 5 in here with that h inside of the parentheses. So it was 2 times 5h, giving us at this point having 2 times 5h would have been a 10h. So now moving forward, combining like terms on the right gave us 10h plus 50 equals 10h plus 50. Next, move all of our variables to one side. We subtract subtract 10h from each side of our equation using the subtraction property of equality. And we come out with 50 equals 50. This is our spec second special situation. And what it involves is if you end up with an equation at the end that has no variable and is true, 50 is in fact equal to 50, then what that means is you have an infinite number of solutions. Meaning that no matter what real number we select, we can substitute it in for the value of h in the equation and it will balance out on both sides. So along with being able to solve numerical involving algebraic equations, we also need to be able to solve what are called literal equations. Literal equations typically are those that involve formulas that are used for solving, such as geometric shape figures. In here I have a equals half b times h, which is the formula for finding the area of a triangle. If I want to solve this for a particular variable, say b, then what I'm going to do is perform the same operations on my numbers and variables here in order to isolate that one variable. So, in order to get started, I have a equals one half <coughs> b times h. I want to get rid of that numerical part first, so I would divide by one half. And dividing by one half has equivalent action as multiplying by the reciprocal. So a divided by one half is going to equal 2a. Next, I need to isolate b, so I have b times h. I'll divide both sides by h. Divide both sides by h. And what I come out with is b is equal to 2a divided by h. So if I know the area that I want for a triangle, and I know the height, I can calculate the base using this adjusted formula. Next, P equals 2 times the quantity of L plus W. This is your formula for finding the perimeter of a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is isolate the variable W. To do that, first I get rid of the item outside of my parentheses. It's being multiplied in there, so I will divide both sides by 2 using the division property of equality. So I have P halves is equal to L plus W. To get W by itself, I have a positive L being added to it, so I'm going to subtract L from both sides using the subtraction property of equality. And I have W is equal to half of P minus L. Now, using my symmetric property, I will have W equals P divided by 2 minus L. So now if you know a desired perimeter and a changing length or a set length and a changing perimeter, you'll be able to solve for the width that is needed in order to construct that. So basic solving is going to be a major part of your study of Algebra 2 as well as trigonometry, pre-calculus, and calculus moving forward. Make sure you have the basic concepts down through this lesson and are ready to move forward.